On the front sight, we're pretty close. We're gonna see if I can't get, if this isn't good. We did nine total clicks up. We'll see how it goes. Definitely one of those times where an optic doesn't necessarily help you shoot better. It definitely helps you see better. We'll see how that turned out. Hopefully I wasn't hitting any branches. So we did the uh, 25 meter zero on these irons. So I'll see if I can't flip you. So first shot, we're shooting here, hit here. Made five clicks up, shot here. Four additional clicks, we're here. I'm gonna drop it a click and then confirm. And we'll see how it goes. Hey guys, Doug with Matic Rifleman. So today we're going to be talking about iron sights and iron sight pictures. The reason we're doing this video in this order is so that before we get into our uh, fundamentals videos where people are getting into firing positions, uh, either for dry or live fire purposes, I want to have a conversation about what you are looking at down your rifle or down your pistol. So that way, once you get there, you we don't have to have a conversation or you don't have to be thinking about what does a sight picture look like. So. Basically, there's two types that we're going to, at least there's two types of sites that we're going to talk about in this video. Primarily, we're going to talk about aperture sites, like you may see on an AR-15, and we're going to talk about notch and post sites, like you'd see on a Glock handgun or most of your common semi-automatic handguns, or on something like an AKM rifle. I'm not going to get too much into the weeds on iron sights, because my, my exposure to rifle iron sights is more limited than some shooters may have. I will talk very basically here. And then we will do videos in the future on how to zero your iron sights on a rifle and then different types of ways people go about them. And that'll be a fun video for both of us because hopefully you guys get something out of it information wise and I get some extra experience that I'm personally lacking on as far as using iron sights at extended distances. So with that being said, we're going to be talking very, very uh, specifically on using iron sights in the context of a new shooter or in a person interested in self-defense or we'll say uh, fighting use of iron sights. So we're not talking about target shooting out to 600 meters where you're using different types of holds to have maximum range use out of your iron sights. We're talking about with pistols zero to 50 meters and with rifles zero to 200 meters or so, so that you can get standard, easy point of aim, point of impact impacts with your, whatever it be a pistol or rifle in those given circumstances. So with that being said, we're not going to be discussing the six o'clock holder. We'll be talking about a standard uh, kind of cut the target in half or bullet goes right across the top of your uh, of your front sight post because I believe that is more intuitive for most people in most circumstances to use other than sitting there and trying to figure out like what the six o'clock hold is on a B8 versus on your intended uh, or hopefully not intended target. Bad wording. I meant hopefully you don't ever have to you have an intended target, right? But anyway. So with that being said, uh, let's talk about side pictures. I'm going to first use a picture uh, that I drew, super fancy artist time, and then we will get into seeing what it actually looks like on a target. Um, I'm not going to use a rifle because I'm thinking that would be super awkward. We're going to use a little bit of hand gesture uh, to kind of give you guys a picture on that one. So without further ado, let's get into the picture. Alrighty guys, this is my super fancy artist work. The uh, So here we have a aperture sight. So we have the rear sight, the front sight, and then a rough idea of what your sight picture should look like. And then we have the post in front. So, I'm sorry, the notch in front sight. So we have the uh, outline of your rear sight, your front sight, and then an idea of what your sighting picture should look like. Now, like I said, we want to probably have 
a uh, what I use is a hold where the bullet is going right across the tippy top of your sight in your notch and post that would be right there now with your sight picture you want to have equal distance on the horizontal plane between your uh, vertical walls right here and then you want to have equal height across the top of your sighting plane now there is a saying equal height equal light meaning your height is equal between all three posts and the light coming through on either side of your front sight post is equal that's a pretty helpful little saying to, to keep that in mind that is what a appropriately lined up sight should look like um, you know other than it being terribly poor quality if your iron sights look like this maybe get a new pair <laughs> um, your aperture sight you're going to have the tip of the aperture lined up in the top of, I'm sorry, lined up in the middle of the circle of your, of your uh, rear sight. Now, in both cases, your rear sight should be out of focus of your eye. Your front sight should be in, in crisp focus and your target and rear sight should be slightly out of focus. Um, this is going to make keeping alignment of your whole weapon system in alignment with the target easiest. So just go ahead and keep that front sight fo uh, focus if you're shooting for marksmanship. If you're shooting threat focused in short distances, that's fine. But keep in mind, you are making a sacrifice in regards to uh, marksmanship. Now, as far as on a proper actual set of sights, what you're going to look at is now we're going to use the uh, center mass black dot as our aiming point. Give me a moment to get lined up with the camera and the target so that is more or less what it's going to look like for you guys um pretty simple stuff and then with the rifle sights or aperture sights you're going to have your rear sight or my hand and then you're going to have the finger as the front sight post and it's going to look more or less like that okay now now of course that's going to be uh your rear sight will be blurry your front sight will be nice and in focus and your target's going to be a little bit blurry as well. Now, I find that there's a lot more going on here uh, than you would with a red dot sight. So if you're starting off with a red dot sight, you're going to have a simpler time learning your shooting fundamentals because you have less to focus on in regards to your sighting systems. Your iron sights are a more complicated and in my opinion, more delicate system than a red dot sight. It is common belief in many people's minds that a red dot is more likely or prone to failure. That has not been my experience personally. I have seen a high, a disproportionate number of iron sights failures compared to proper red dots. And when I say proper red dots, I'm not necessarily saying high tier things like aim points. I'm talking even in hollow sun optics or primary arm optics, um, which are quality enough for most people and uses, but not considered like super high tier. I personally have seen much more failure out of both rifle and pistol iron sights. And more importantly, people talk about how people that really use guns uh, always have backup iron sights. Well, the reality is they may have them, but they're not using them. When you see army units with backup iron sights, I've never seen anyone other than myself even attempt to zero their iron sight on their M4, their issued M4. The one time that I attempted to zero mine, I got yelled at and told I was wasting time. So do with that information what you will. So when you see these, people may have backup iron sights that they're not even zeroed or even aware of the use of. Uh, I've, I've seen these sights fall apart. I've seen them get caked with mud and dirt. I've seen them just fail in the weirdest ways uh, and they're not even being used. So, and then furthermore, with your, you know, the sights you might see on traditional weapons like bowstring sights on a shotgun, for example, I've seen those fall apart in numerous ways. I've seen front sight posts get cheered off. I've seen back sights get kicked out. I've seen all kinds of stuff. I've seen mud get kicked down inside of your sighting assembly in such a way that you'd have to sit there with a toothbrush or some type of pick for 20 minutes to get it cleared out in a way that's usable. People talk about how there's you know, how red dots are so inferior to iron sights in regards to the durability, that has not been my experience at all. And it's plain to me that red dot sights are a much simpler option. Now, there are many ways to go about using iron sights. You're not necessarily screwed using iron sights. There's nothing wrong with iron sights other than the fact that they are a outdated and inferior or inferior sighting system compared to what we have 
for modern sighting systems. That's just the reality of the situation. If you're choosing to go with iron sights over due to your costs and what you can afford to do, that's perfectly fine. Just understand your limitations and then train as best you can around them. Now, as far as using your iron sights in close proximity, you something that you can do with your Air 15 sighting systems is actually take the hooded section. Actually, let me pause for a second. I'll grab a rifle. All right, guys, we're going to do our best here. But what you can do is almost stack your front sight on top of your uh, rear sight aperture like this. And you can actually use that front sight out there. Um, it's super out of focus. One second. Sorry. So you can pop it up like that and use that front sight aperture almost like a speed sight. Um, it's pretty, it actually works pretty good. You're going to be limited to inside approximately 10 meters. You don't want to go outside of that. But if you're inside rooms and things like that, um, it can be a really fast sighting system to use as a quick reference point of where that rifle is oriented. Uh, just to get you on target really quickly, get rounds on, and move on to your next threat. Hopefully there's no threats, but you understand the point. So uh, that's a way to go about it. But keep in mind, if you're using sights like this where you have the MBUS, these are designed to be stowed like this and to be used for to get you from the point of an optics failure to the ability to fix your optic or get to a, site, a set of like proper fixed rears or irons. They're not intended to go six years of duty use like this. I know people do it uh, and they work, but that is not the intended use of, of sighting systems like this. They're supposed to be back up sights. If you're gonna be using your iron sights as a primary method of aiming, maybe consider getting something like the uh, Down Over Bench Rock and Locks or the Scalar Works. Uh, peak sights, something that's fixed and proper and designed to be a primary aiming system. With that being said, guys, uh, I hope this has been helpful. We're going to be doing the red dot video next, uh, so feel free to uh, stick around for that. I don't know if it'll be out today, but hopefully out tomorrow at, at the uh, at the latest. Uh, then we'll be getting into our shooting um, stances, standing, kneeling, prone, and then all those positions supported and hopefully start getting into some live fire stuff and actually talking about improving our marksmanship capabilities. With that being said, it's been Doug and Mac Reffman. I hope this has been helpful for you guys. You guys have a wonderful day. Back in my day, we shot on flat ranges in perfect conditions and we could see everything.